and glitches and things are weird. All right, so um, in the class, we talked a little bit about the foundation of uh, Anderson Hasselbach and the fact that this formula and uh, really represent the relationship between pH, pKa, and buffers. And then we uh, we had a couple questions that we did in the class, but I want to solve with you a few more questions. So the next, the first question that we're going to solve is what is the pH of a mixture of 0.042 molar of sodium uh, that hydrophosphate, that's basically some sort of a phosphate buffer. So H2PO4 and 0.058 molar of sodium HPO4 in one liter, okay? So we know this, this actually known in biochemistry that we use that in experiment, this is known as to be a phosphate buffer system. And you can see here that there is one thing that I want you to pay attention is that you see that there are two components here. There's like sodium and there's H2PO4 and then sodium HPO4. How do you know which one is the acid and which one is the conjugate base? Anyone has an idea how to identify that? So how I do it is that I look to see which one has the more hydrogen that it can give off. So with this one, it could even be like a diprotic because even the HPO4 two minus can give off one more hydrogen. Correct, yeah, I couldn't say that better. And I, and I like this approach and that's totally uh, uh, the way to do it. So you can see that uh, this, uh, uh, this will be the acid in our case, and this one will be the conjugate base later on. And because that will be able to uh, donate the proton to the reaction, right? So the pKa that is given to us is that the pKa of the dihydrogen phosphate is 6.86, all right? So we know that we have a pKa equal 6.86. And here I already draw the reaction. So you can see H2PO4, and there's a minus here that's gonna say that this is ionic form and the counter ion of that. But we could simply say that this will be our acid, right? And this is going to be our conjugate base. And I'm using this all the time as, as a way to say, okay, H acid, you know, in the conjugate base. So, so if you want, you can write the whole uh, H2PO4 or HPO42. It really doesn't matter at this point, uh, mostly because it's not going to be open uh, question, open answer exam. Uh, but uh, normally uh, it's totally fine to just do HA and A minus for our purposes. Okay, any questions here? Yes, I had a quick question. Yeah. Um, which one, so they both say NaH2PO4, so which one is which? Which one's the 0.042 molar and which one's the 0.058 molar? Uh, you see that there, there's a mixture of 0.042 molar of this, the NaH2PO4 and 0.058 mm -hmm. molar of this, the sodium HPO4, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah, I don't, I don't think, yeah, that's oh, not, oh, okay. yeah, not okay, supposed to be confused. Maybe if I put it in like one line sentence, it will be clearer, yeah. But the 0.058 is really mean that that's gonna be the conjugate base in our case. All right, so, um, there's a pKa here, and actually this pKa is known. You don't need to memorize any pKa, but you do need to know that different uh, buffer system and different type of acids will have their own pKa, and that's uh, uh, rock solid, and it's, it's written in stone, but this is not something that I expect you to know. Uh, what we want to do now, we want to actually solve this problem. The very first thing that we want to do, we want to write the uh, anderson Hasselbach. So pH equal pKa, plus log of the conjugate base over the acid, right? So in this case, we know that uh, the pKa is 6.86 plus log of the concentration that is given to us in this mixture, 
which is going to be 0 0.058. I can write molar here, or I can just put it like that, over 0 0.042. And I can put molar in molar. Sometimes I like to do that just in case, um, you know, the professor is going to mess with me and going to say millimolar in one, one point. So then you need to adjust that, that it will all need to be at the same units, right? So in this case, they are both molar, so I'm just going to keep it like that. But if you are not sure, you can just write, uh, instead of like that, you can just do molar and molar, so you won't forget that this needs to be at the same unit. All right, so uh, how to answer that? We're going to do 6.86 plus slug of this fraction. Uh, I highly recommend, because this is office hours, if you have a, cal a calculator, right there, try to do it. Try to do it now. I mean, you can use this calculator, you can use a, a whatever calculator that is, is you know, uh, try not to use graphical calculator because that's not gonna be allowing to the, in the in-person exams, but uh, we're gonna give you a, a, some sort of a link to online calculator that you can use during the exam if you want. Uh, but if you have a calculator, try to not just now do it. The more you do it, the faster that you'll be able to, to answer questions during the exam also. So I think it's a good practice to do that. So if you do this, you will get that this will be o, uh, 0. Point, um, sorry, the answer will be 0. 0.14. So here, if I calculate the pH, it will be equal to seven. So the one more thing I want you to, to, to look here and just maybe do some sort of a conceptual understanding of what's happening here. So this seems to be very simple and you, I really don't want you to complicate it more than what it seems here. It's pretty plug, plugging the numbers. But I do wanna write down here something that I would call the conceptual check. Every time that you do these type of problems, I really find it useful to Think about what's really happened in the situation in this solution. Try to take a look at what we have here. We have 0 0.042 molar of this acid and 0 0.058 of this base. How much do I have more? Do I have more of the base or do I have more of the acid? Try to think about it, right? I have a little bit more of the base, right? So that means that it will have to be a little bit higher than the pKa. So I'm gonna write it down, but I want you to start thinking about that when you see these type of questions, because it really helps not to get confused when you, when you, when you walk out the, the problems and sometimes can really make you solve things faster uh, during uh, MCAT, for example. Because just conceptually, you understand, right? I have a little bit more base here, the pKa is 6.8, so that must be higher than that, right? So the PAH is above the pKa, right? Remind you, the pH is seven, is above the pKa, which is 6.88. And that's because there's just more base than acid form. Right? Anyone has questions about, about that or, or something that uh, they want to reflect looking at this, uh, this question? And I'm going to move forward, if not. All right. So we're going to move forward to the next question. So the next question. I have um, one ml, if one ml of 10 molar NaOH solution is added to a liter of the buffer that I just prepared. So I just prepared a phosphate buffer. How much will the pH change? All right, so that, that's really awesome question because basically the buffer that I just prepared, the phosphate buffer, 
And now I'm going to add 10 molar of NaOH, and they ask me how much the pH will change. So let's start with solving this. And the very first thing that I want, we want to do, uh, we want to recause the first uh, example that we got here was in molars. And sometimes we like to talk in moles when we do this type of, uh, of uh, uh, solutions. So I'm going to try to convert that into moles, right? So first of all, what is 10 molar NaOH? So 10 molar NaOH is 10 moles of NaOH, right? In 1000 ml, right? So I can also say that it's in, if I have 10 moles in 1000 ml, how many ml, how many moles I have in one ml. Because the main question that I've been asked is that I have one ml of 10 molar NaOH. So I have to have this conversion. So in that case, if I solved for this X, it will be 0, 0.0 moles of NaOH added. So now I know how many moles I added here. So that's important to just make sure that you, you know how many moles are uh, going into this reaction. Now let's, let's draw the reaction again. So we have H2PO4 plus NaOH, right? And we know that once we add this NaOH, uh, the weak acid will keep uh, dissociate, right? to this HPO4 with this divalent right here, uh, plus H2O. So this, this is pretty much the same as we talked about before, right? We, have, we add sodium hydroxide and now we have this equilibrium that's happening here. So we started with how many H2PO4 moles we started with. If you don't remember, let's go to what's happening in this solution, right? We started this mixture has 0 0.042 moles per liter, right? Molar, it's moles per liter of NaH2PO4. We don't count the sodium. We don't care about this in our calculation because they are not contributing to the pH. So we started with 0 0.042 moles, right? So we started with, let me write it down. We started with, 0.042 moles and how many conjugate base we had there in the beginning we had the conjugate base in the beginning let's take a look we had 0.058 moles per liter right so we had 0.058 moles And yeah, and this reaction is happening in one liter. So that's also something that I want to make sure that I'm saying moles per liter, because this is really what happened. It's all happening in one liter. So what happening here? Do you remember one of the things that I mentioned when we talked about uh, Anderson Hasselbach when we start solving this problem? Anyone remember what is the things that I ask? Please remember. Is it the where you said every unit of OH removes one unit of acid and creates one of base? Exactly, yes. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna move here because this is basically what what, what we mentioned here. When we have this uh, type of questions, one of the guiding light for me is to remember that when I have this type of situation, right? When I add an OH to this type of reaction. Every unit of OH added removes one unit of acid and creates one unit of base. So when I have this scenario, I need to go back and actually do the same thing. Now they told me, I mean, we just calculated how many 
me, let me put it here, right? We just calculated how many moles of NaOH we added, right? We just say that right here. So I can actually solve for that, right? I can say that in H2PO4, right? We had, we started with 0 0.042 moles, right? Everyone can agree with me that we just, this is what we started with. That's what was the reaction before we had NaOH. But now I added NaOH. So what happened? I remove the same unit, 0, 0.0 moles, right? But I also create right here, unit on the conjugate base. So 0 0.058 moles plus 0 0.01 moles, right? So let's, let's, let's solve that. So this is basically 0 0.032 moles. And this is 0 0.068 moles. So now, let me add another page here so it will be easier. So now I can I can start uh, solve the uh, using Anderson Hasselbach. So let me write Anderson Hasselbach. Move to this color. So I have pH equal pKa plus log. And now let's put uh, this exact unit. So, so we have H HPO for two minus here over H2 PO4, right? And we know, remember what's the pKa? The pKa is changing? No, pKa is rock solid. It's not gonna change. It's the same acid. It's still gonna be 6.86. That was given me in the previous problem. Plus log of what I just solved, which is gonna be this one and this one. So we have 0 0.068. And these are moles per liter over 0 0.032 moles per liter. Now I can solve the log and please practice that. Even now with me, and if you have questions, show me the calculator, I'm gonna show you how to do it. But it's fairly easy, just do the fraction and just do the log of that and you're gonna get 6.86 plus 0.33. Do it several times, make sure that your calculator is working, that you are able to do it and you're able to do it fast but correctly. So you won't waste time on figure out things during the exam. So that means that the pH is equal 7.19, 7 7.19. Let's go back to the conceptual uh, check, right? Anyone wanna make with me this conceptual check what's happening here? Does that make sense? I mean, since you're adding base, it makes sense that the pH is increasing. All right, thank you. Yes, absolutely. So conceptual check. And again, when I do that, this is totally something that you need to do. You don't need to write it in, in the exam or something, but please just keep that in mind when you have the answer, just go over and say, hey, is that make sense? Is my answer is really make sense? So conceptual check here is I add, right, strong base, right? So my pH has to go higher, right? It's now 7.19. What is the mixture what I start with, right? So the mixture that I started with was pH seven, right? Start with pH seven, and now I end up with 7.19. I'm gonna talk about it in a second, but think about it. I add 10 molar NaOH, I just raise the pH a little bit, right? This is the power of buffers. I'm gonna talk about it in a second. Before I'm answering question, I have a question for you guys. Is anything that I did here, do you have any disagreement with that?
not a disagreement, but I just have a question. Yeah. So I understand how we did um, the calculations for the new initial and the new final. Um, my question is for the phosphate buffer system question. How come we didn't have to do that calculation? Was it because no strong base or acid was added? Correct. Okay. Now, um, what's the disagreement that you guys could have here? And that's something that I ask every, every year. Think about I, something here. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? So I get a little bit confused when, when you're adding actually 0 0.01 moles. Why is it going, I kind of like get confused because I'm thinking it's going twice. Like it's going for H2, H2PO4 minus and HPO4 to minus. So I get confused. Why is it going twice, not only once? Um, you mean, what do you mean twice? I mean, like you, you're subtracting it, then you're adding it up. Because oh. we're, we have only one mil of 10 molar NaOH. Yeah, is someone volunteered to explain that? Yeah, like, he's oh, sorry, go ahead. He's basically just removing 0.01 moles from the acid because you know you're adding the base. So you're removing 0.01 moles from there and then you're making the conjugate base of the same amount being 0.01 moles. So just kind of like transferring it from the base and then making more conjugate acid of the same amount, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, and, okay. and I that, would that add, and to, for that, I would add the way, the reason that it happened is that the weak acid will want to satisfy its equilibrium, its pKa, right? And I'm I'm going back again here. Remember when I said that? I don't know if you were in, when I when I mentioned that, but every time that you see this type of question, that's going to be your guiding. That's going to be your guiding. Every unit of OH added, remove one unit of acid, create one unit of base. Just remember that. And you're gonna just figure it out when you when you start putting it together. And once you put it together, it's all gonna make sense. But there's something else that I want to say with a disagreement here that the, uh, I was hoping that some one of you will catch me on that. Is it the per liter, like the concentration? Almost, yes. You're close. Because I, I kind of you. there I got confused, but I didn't really yeah. understand. So so what one thing is here. I I, I just I, I actually highlight that, but so. What was the solution that I started with? I started with one liter, right? But what happened here, I added one ml to one liter. And then everything that I calculate, I calculate based on one liter. But that's actually not true because I no longer have one liter, right? I don't have one liter now. I have one liter plus one ml. So this is the only disagreement. Is that gonna change my answer? Absolutely 100% no. Why? Because it's really less than 10%. And in usually in chemistry and biochemistry, this less than 10% is not really uh, critical for, for the pH. In some other experiment, that could be really important. But the reason I want to raise that because I do want you to pay attention to these type of details, right? We have a one liter, right? Keep that in mind. We start with one liter. This is my one liter buffer system, phosphate buffer system that has these mixtures that they are in equilibrium, right? We have a little bit more base than acid, but they are equilibrium. There's a little bit of dissociation all, all the time that happens. It doesn't really matter, but that's happening in one liter. Now I add one ml of NaOH. I'm no longer in one liter, right? But why it's not gonna change my calculation? Because when we think about one liter and one ml, we're thinking about basically, and I'm just gonna put it in a different color so you won't be uh, confused. This is not a critical information in this case, but you do wanna pay attention. I, had, I started with 1000, well, that's too, yeah. I started with 1000 ml, right? And I added one ml. So in other words, I now have 1001 ml. So let's say the best way I need to recalculate that to 1001 ml but it's not gonna change the answer, right? So it's instead of 7.19, it could be 7.9005 or something like that. You know, don't call, catch me on that, but it's not really gonna change the fact that this is 7.19. And that's gonna change my, the fact that in experiments, that's still gonna be pretty much a good buffer system. So I just want to raise this 
uh, for some scenario because I, I used to have uh, uh, these cases that said, oh, wait a minute, you're no longer in one liter. Why, why are you still calculating everything for one liter? And you're absolutely right, but it's because it's only one ml addition, there's absolutely no worries about that because this is really uh, less than even 10% of, of the reaction. Now I'm gonna move forward, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm gonna have more questions uh, for you. And you can ask, ask me more questions. But I do want to emphasize this point that we add one ml of sodium hydroxide into this one liter and the pH only raised by very small amount, but it's still raised. So the conceptual check work. I'm gonna throw you back to one of our first lectures when it's pretty much the easiest one, when we have a strong base or strong acid that we put in one liter of pure water, right? So what's happening here, right? Don't get confused. This is a complete dissociation. So now I have a question that asks me, what is the pH? If the same amount of sodium hydroxide is added to one liter of H2O, not phosphate buffer, just H2O. So let's do that. NaOH going to be to uh, dissociate to sodium plus hydroxide. See that I only have one arrow because the equilibrium is very, very much, it's, it's like that, it's very small. I mean, it could go back, but it's really tiny. So it's mostly gonna dissociate completely, 99.999. So if the same amount, right? If I have 0.0 moles of NaOH in water, what do I have? I basically, everything dissociates. So everything went to hydroxide concentration that will be 0.01 moles per liter. And if you remember, we can do the POH, equal negative log of OH. And if you plug in the numbers, you get that the POH is two. And that means that the pH is equal to, well, let me do that, pH plus POH equal 14. And therefore the pH in this one will be 12, right? Why I'm showing you that, I wanna show you that because I really wanna emphasize the power of buffers. What's the definition of buffer to resist the pH change? What happened here? I added exactly the same amount of NaOH, exactly the same amount, one ml in the buffer the pH raised from seven to 7.19. But in H2O, the pH raised from seven to 12. So, and this is also true, by the way, if I add acid, right? It's not gonna change. That's the, that's the power of, of, of the buffer system. And that was really one of the most uh, important points that uh, I wanna make when I, I'm showing you a uh, uh, buffer and explaining that. Before I move on to the next question, do you guys have any questions for me? I have a few that raised their hand, but I don't know if it's from before or, from, or now. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I had a question, um, kind of like a general question. I noticed like in some of the practice problems as well, a lot of times like you, are looking more at like the actual like amount of moles that are being added compared to like the actual concentration. And I noticed that like in a lot of the problems, like um, the volume of solution is like one liter. And so um, like on the exam, for example, would we like if you give us a problem where the amount of solution is different than one liter, would we need to be looking at like the concentrations or can we still use like the moles that are being added? Well, moles is never going to be a wrong answer, right? Because moles can be in any volume. Yeah. But, but if you say molar, then you're assuming that it's a mole per liter, okay? And if your solution is, let's say, I don't know, 100 ml, so you cannot say that you are in the concentration of 
let's say one mole per one liter, but you are in one mole in 100 ml, and then you need to do this type of conversion. Okay, okay. so so um, you do you do want to pay attention to the to the volume. Uh, sometimes it's easier to work in moles, and when it's come to the concentration, then bring it back and do this calculation, like I did here, when. Uh, it's almost the same as here. When when I start the question here, when it, when just say one ml of sodium hydroxide in these mm -hmm. concentrations, okay, okay, let's let's wait a little bit. Let's just make sure that I'm converting it to the right, mm -hmm. you know, right number. So it's actually if I want to say moles in the liter, so that has to be uh, 0.01 moles, right? So that's that's okay. the idea here. Okay. Um, I also just wanted to quickly ask about this problem that you're showing right now too. You kind of answered part of my question. Um, yeah. which is that you don't really have to change the uh, volume just because it's so small in comparison, like one, one milliliter compared to one liter. Yeah. But on the exam, for example, if it were to be like, I don't know, like 50 milliliters or 500 milliliters, then would we need to take it into account? Like, is there like a threshold that, you know, we have to look for? Uh, well, I would say this, you want to know how to do it, but, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, if it's anywhere below 10% of the total volume, I wouldn't worry about that in okay. your calculation. The calculation will still be the same. And okay. that said, also keep in mind that uh, we are in multiple choice uh, exam. So, yeah. so things, things will be fairly okay, unless it's way different, right? So mm -hmm. if, you had, if you have one liter of that and you had another liter, so you are, you know, you absolutely need to calculate that again. Okay, thank you. Um, any more questions? I can move forward and I can go back to questions if you want. But if there's an urgent question, I'm gonna keep doing that. So I think that will really help solidify. But anyone has a, a burning question that want me to answer? Yeah, I had a question. Um, so for all these example problems, we've always been adding base. So will we ever have a situation where like, we're adding acid to a buffer and then we would have to calculate the pH change? Yeah, I mean, uh, you want to know what's going to happen when you have an acid added. Uh, we are not, we did not work this problem because we mostly working on weak acid and bases uh, rather than weak bases and add an acid. So um, I can tell you, I wouldn't worry a lot about that. Um, I would Maybe I'm going to post a video that's showing how to solve this when it's the other way, either uh, other way around. But uh, uh, again, the the reason I'm we are mostly focusing on weak acid and strong base in 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 this intro is that we are heading towards amino acids, and amino acids are weak acids. So that's that's okay. going to be our main focus. Yeah, but okay. but doing it alternatively is basically almost the same you just need to take into consideration the the differences it's a little bit different directions yeah okay thank you any other questions all right so i'm going to continue with this question so how many moles of the same phosphate hydrogen phosphate uh, uh, this nah2po4 and, NA, and, and na2hpo4 would you combine to make one liter of a 0.1 molar phosphate buffer at pH seven? All right, so the, the pKa is a 6.86. So in a way, it's, this question is inverted from the previous one. It's really just to show you the way to, to solve this. So let's, when I have this type of questions, I'm gonna first of all, see what they ask me, right? They ask me how many walls, okay? I like to annotate how many moles I have of this uh, Na, uh, NH2PO4 and Na2HPO4. Uh, how would you combine in one liter of a 0.1 molar buffer at pH seven? And they give me the pKa. So let's write down what's going to happen here. So we have the same thing. We have H2PO4 that is in equilibrium with HPO4 plus the hydrogen. So using Anderson Hasselbach, we know that we, they ask me about the pH. So the pH is giving to me, it's gonna be seven. We know the pKa, which is 6.86. I'm gonna write it Anderson Hasselbach. I don't think we need to, every time I'm gonna write the, the equation. So you already know that. And then plus log 
of the moles or the molar, right? So this is still in, in liter, so I can say in, in, in liter, but I don't know how many moles, right? I need to find out, that's the question. So I'm, I'm just gonna write it down like that. So let's say, right, let me write it like that, HPO4 over H2PO4. So there are two ways to solve it. I'm gonna show you one way. Um, so we first solved for seven minus 6.86 is gonna give me 1.4, 1.4. And that will be equal to, uh, no, uh, let me see, that will be equal. Let me see, I think the 1.4, let me just double check. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Seven, seven minus 6.86 is 0 0.14. And then you need to do the anti log of that, right? So the anti log of that. If you are not sure, let me know. I'm going to show you on the calculator how to do it. But you need to do the anti log of that. That's going to give you the value of 1.4. I would suggest try to do it in a calculator and see if you get 1.4. Seven minus 6.86 is 0.14 and you do the anti-log of that and you're gonna get 1.4 of the concentration of HPO4 over the concentration of H2PO4 uh, minus right there. So how can I solve this problem right now, okay? So I'm gonna show you a, a, one way to do it. So one way to do it and really there's no preferred way. It really could be the same. So let's say that 1.4 is like 1.4 over one, right? And then I can do basically cross multiplication. And this is from here, it's complete algebra. So whoever is like super algebraic uh, aficionado, go ahead, figure it out, you got this. But other than that, let me show you how to solve it. So we have 1.4, times H2, PO4, and that will be equal to the concentration of H, PO4, two minus. So in other words, uh, I now have this type of equation, right, that derived basically from the cross multiplication right there. What does that also tell me, right? Remember, that when we have these moles, they're all add up, right? They're all gonna add up. They're gonna add up to 0.1 moles per liter because this is what the phosphate buffer is. So this is a critical thing to understand that when you think about it, the acid, well, you know what, let me do it in a different color. So the acid plus the conjugate base will equal to 0.1 molar. I'm gonna write it here. Both forms add up to 0.1 moles per liter in this particular buffer system, right? Let me add another page here. So now if I have that, right? So I can say that using this, uh, this equation, say, so I can say that I can basically replace one with the other. So I can say, for example, H2PO4 plus instead of putting H HPO4 to minus, I'm going to add, I'm going to do 1.4 H2PO4, right? And I know that this one equal to 0.1 molar. And since this is almost, it's like one 
right? And this is plus 1.4. So you can say 2.4 of H2PO4 is equal to 0.1 molar. And therefore H2PO4 is equal to 0 0.042. I mean, here I basically divided both sides with, uh, uh, with 0.1 molar. So now I know that H2PO4 is equal to 0 0 0.042 moles, right, uh, per liter. So I can always also find out what is the concentration of the conjugate base, right? I know that the conjugate of the, con the, the conjugate base will both equal to 0.1 molar or 0.1 moles per liter. So I can always say this in one liter, in one liter, 0 0.042 moles will be H2PO4 minus. That basically answer the first question, the first question, the first part of this question and 0 0.1 moles minus 0 0.042 moles will give me 0 0.058 moles of HPO4 two minus. Now, if it is in different volumes, yeah, you may need to do an extra step, right? To, to, to make sure that you have that. And uh, I could post you a video about that. But, but all in all, just be comfortable to know when you have this type of uh, scenario, they just add up to the, to the maximum uh, moles per liter that is giving to you here, right there. Any questions about, about that? Where I have a few more minutes, but I, I would be happy to stay with you a, a little bit longer. So feel free to, to let me know if this is understandable. Don't overthink these questions. They are fairly similar in most cases. Just make sure that you annotate, you are looking at the question, you understand what you are being asked, uh, what happening in this, in this situation. So just make sure that that you completely understand uh, the, the question and what's the scenario that's happening here. And always do this type of conceptual check, right? What, what's really happening? So this was the inverted question. I have someone that raised that. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Shani. No, okay, Nicole. Yes, Chen. yes, no, Nicole? Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, I had, uh, I, I think this might be like a, dumb question or like I just missed something but in the question it's asking like for um NaH2PO4 and NaH2PO4 um oh so, yeah you can add that yeah you can add the sodium if you want okay yeah. so they're they're just the same yeah it's the same I mean okay. yeah yeah again I'm I'm you know maybe in in chemistry maybe you know someone will be you know will kill me on that but I I don't care I mean, the sodium is really not contributing to the pH, and we, we're just ignoring that in our class. Okay, okay. Thanks. Yeah, don't worry about that, yeah. Any more questions, Han? Yeah, I had a question on, like, on a problem where we, it's NaOH added to a, like, the solution or, like, a buffer, and how every unit of OH added removes one unit of acid and creates one unit of base. Does that okay. is that something something like that? Meaning? Yeah, like like that um yeah. rule yeah. that we're supposed to follow. Is that um oh, does that only apply to NaOH? It, is there meaning uh, what 
what do you mean? What what's the other alternative? Like you mean other strong base or or yeah, other, like other things? Like, like yeah, what we see like other strong bases in like a problem or no? Uh, in the class, we mostly gonna say an AOH. Okay. Yeah, it's really just keep in mind that when you have a strong base, it's gonna completely dissociate, right? And gonna really uh, deprotonate the situation. So that's, I think that's the most important thing um, for us is that this is gonna completely dissociate. And, and giving the weak acid that it has its own equilibrium, right? So then it has more availability of OH. So you have a little bit more H2O is, create, H2O is created, but also it's really increasing the tendency of the, of the weak acid uh, to to remove more units of of uh, of its acid and gain more units of the conjugate base. Yeah. Thank you. More questions. More questions about Anderson Asselbach. And if there's none, uh, then I can I can uh, talk about. It. So, if there's other questions that are not related, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording because that's what uh, I promised to. Um, to the class uh, that uh, related to the Anderson Asselbach. So any questions that you think that would be useful uh, for Anderson Asselbach? And if not, I'm gonna uh, stop the recording and then I'm gonna stay with you guys to any, any questions that you may have. All right, so. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy that you guys understand that. I think that more practice is really helping uh, with uh, figuring out this uh, type of questions. Um, you know, if you want, I can do one more uh, step towards something that we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce tomorrow that's also gonna be in the, in the exam, uh, showing uh, how we can look into the PKA of, of amino acid. You guys don't need to know the structure of the amino acid, but uh, you do wanna be aware that they are polyprotic acid. Any of you guys, let's say thumbs up if you want me to explain that. I'm gonna talk about it tomorrow as well, but do you guys wanna do that or do you guys wanna do something else? So this is purely your time. Uh, let's see, we have, we have 33 people. Cannot see everyone, let me see. And so, Okay, now I can see. So everyone that wants me to talk about polyprotic acid that I have not talked to, uh, yet in the class, but I'm gonna talk about tomorrow morning. So whoever gonna be tomorrow morning, gonna get it, you know, like a, a, a rerun uh, on the same thing. Do you guys want me to do that? Or you want me to pause here and answer other questions? So let's do the majority thumbs up to go over polyprotic acid. All right. I think it's kind of majority. Let me do that. I'm gonna do a little bit and then I'm gonna pause uh, for some uh, other questions that you may have, okay? So I'm gonna to talk tomorrow about this part. So you guys are gonna hear that again. Um, and I want to just mentioning uh, the idea of amino acids as a polyprotic uh, acid in the cell. Uh, one of the things that we talked about polyprotic acid that they will have more hydrogen to donate. So I'm gonna explain that a little bit tomorrow, but really what I wanna show you um, that, let's take a look, for example, at uh, histidine, right? So this is an amino acid. Some of you, I hope, will start already to learn how to draw this amino acid. So I, I really hope that um, it's something that you guys will start practicing. You don't need to know that for, the, for this midterm, but we definitely want to be comfortable with that. I'm going to draw it a little bit different than we usually draw it because I'm going to put the carboxylic acid right here. Um, and this is the amino group right here. Um, and I do expect everyone to know carboxylic group and, and amino group. So uh, histidine has a kind of like really unique, uh, what we call the imidazole ring that has this uh, ring that looks like that. And because it's a polyprotic amino acid, uh, it has different parts of this amino acid that could have different PKAs, right? 
So for example, in this case of this histidine, every amino acid has its own different PKAs for each group. The carboxylic side, which is this part, the upper part, will have the PKA of 1.8. And that's known for all histidine in the world. So that's a known thing. The PKA of the amino group will be 9.2. And the PKA of the R group, what we call the side chain, or in this case, the imidazole ring, is six. So this is for histidine, but for example, if we take another amino acid, like aspartic acid, so let's say this is gonna be aspartic acid, the aspartic acid will have a different PKAs value. So in the aspartic acid, for example, this the PKA of the carboxylic group will be 3.7. And the PKA of, sorry, this is the side chain, the R group. It's also carboxylic group, it's 3.7. Uh, this PKA of the carboxylic group is 1.9. And the amino group is PKA is 9.6 by all means do not memorize PKAs, okay? If needed, we're gonna give it to you, okay? But I just want you to appreciate the idea of the PKAs. Why I'm telling you about that? Because I wanna show you a trick and I'm gonna show you that in the class tomorrow because it's really cool. Because once you figure it out, you see that you can solve this problem pretty easily. So this amino acid, we can solve it. The polyprotic acids have different groups that have different PKAs. So we have a question, oops, I don't have it here. Uh, okay, okay, let me go here, okay. Okay, let's do this. All right, so this same histidine amino acid, okay, um, in a one molar solution, will have a protonated carboxylic acid group at pH 7, what percent, sorry, what percent of histidine in a one molar solution will have protonated carboxylic acid group at pH 7.3, right? How do I even address this, this question, right? So let me first, um, oh, well, great, my drawing. Okay, I'm gonna draw it again. So, so I'm gonna start with in the carboxylic group and this is the amino group. And this is the backbone of the amino acid that is connected to the R group, which is C, NH, CH, and CH. Now, keep in mind this case, uh, so the PKA is six here, the PKA of the carboxylic group is 1.8, and the PKA of the amino group is 9.2. And that's true for histidine. So how do I know what percent of histidine in a one molar solution, that it's only histidine, this one molar solution, at pH 7.3, what would be the pKa? What would be the percent, the, percent, uh, the, uh, the percent of histidine of the carboxylic group will be in protonated state at pH 7.3? Sorry, it went totally, what percent of histidine in a one molar solution will have a protonated carboxylic acid group at pH 7.3. I'm gonna show you the way to solve it. And if you practice it enough, you'll be able to solve all these type of problems. So one option is to do anderson Hasselbach, but the other option is to do this type of table. So I'm gonna put here when the pH equal, that's gonna be my, my first line, so when a pH equal 1.8, right? I'm just look at, at the situation of the carboxylic group, right? So what is the carboxylic group? This is my carboxylic group. And I was told that the pKa is 1.8, that that was given to me. So if the pH is 1.8, right? I'm gonna say here, this is gonna be my, a conjugate base, and that's gonna be my acid, 
right? In this case, it's gonna be my COO minus, and this is gonna be my COOH. And the way, by the way, I, I, I draw this one will be in the fully protonated form. For this question, it doesn't really matter. For other questions, it's, it's better to, to redraw the amino acid in a fully protonated form. So I wanna ask you, when the pH will be equal 1.8 for the carboxylic acid, what we can say about it? We can say that the pH is also equal to the pKa. What does that mean when the pH is equal to the pKa? Remember, for weak acids. The concentration of the acid and the conjugate base are the same. Exactly, thank you. So the concentration are the same. We can also say that in percentage, right in proportion, this will be 50% conjugate base and 50% protonated. Right? Right, because, you know, the midpoint, right? pH equal pKa, 50% will be acid and 50% will be conjugate base. That's true for weak acid, that's true for any titration, that's true for anything, right? So at 1.8, the pH will be equal pKa and the conjugate base will be 50% and the acid will be 50%. Okay, but what I, well, they asked me about what happened in pH 7.3. So I'm gonna show you one thing. If I add one unit above, so that's gonna be 2.8. If I do one unit above the pKa, you can say that 91% will be conjugate base and 9% will be the acid. And if you add two units above the pKa, 3.8, 99% will be the conjugate base and 1% will be the acid. Now you can do the Handelson Asselbach here if you don't trust me. But if you trust me, just memorize this. One unit above, two unit above. What if it's a half unit? What if it's something else? Then, then you need to do on the sun as above. But if, if, if it's one unit, two unit, it's good enough. So we can say that the pH 3.8, 99% of the carboxylic group will be deprotonated. Right? In a, way, in a way, we can say when we say 99% in our class, we can say all, okay? That's fine, so just say all. So what happened at pH 7.3? So pH 7.3 is way above the 3.8, two units, right? So we can say that at pH 7.3, all the histidine will have all histidines in this solution will have deprotonated form. So now I'm gonna, I, I did a really long explanation for that and I'm gonna do it now faster in the way that I a little bit more expect to do. And if, when you do it enough time, you don't even need to do the calculation, all right? So what percent of histidine in one molar solution will have protonated amino group at pH 7.3? So now they ask me about the amino group, right? What's the percent of the amino group will be protonated, okay? So the amino group, what the percent of histidine will have the amino group, which is NH3 protonated, meaning that it will look like that at pH 7.3. So let's do it. So when pH equal 
then in this case, that's going to be the conjugate base. That's going to be the, the acid or the protonate form. In this case, it's going to be on my NH3 plus. In this case, it's going to be NH2. Remind you, the pKa of the amino group is this one, and it's 9.2. So the 9.2. So when pH will be 9.2, what's going to happen? The pH will be equal to pKa. What we can say? This is 50%, 50%. They ask me about 7.3. So I can only also say if it's one unit below, the pKa, it's gonna be 8.2, and that's gonna be 9% and 91%. Why it's different? Well, it's different, right? Because now I'm lowering the pH, so I have a little bit more of the protonated foam. I have more hydrogens in the solution. How about the seven, if I'm lowering in two units, I can say that it 1% will be the conjugate base and 99% will be the protonated form. So assuming that all is 99% and 7.2 is very close to 7.3, right? It's, it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough, right? To say that it's a little bit above. So we can say that all 99% of histidine will have protonated amino group. Right? And, and we, we, we actually need to say that this is true for 7.2, but it's, it's true also for 7.3 because it's very close to 7.2. Now you can memorize this way, but you do wanna make sure that you have this logic that it's one unit, two units, three units, right? So one unit, sorry, pH equal pKa, one unit and two units. If you are not sure, you can do the anderson Asselbach, And this is something that I'm gonna do it with you on this part tomorrow in class, because in this, class, in this part, you can see that the R group is actually pKa of six. So it's not exactly, you cannot say that it's two unit above will be exactly 99%. You cannot say 91%. You actually need to really give the percentage, right? So it's either you know that it's all, or you know that it's exactly 91%. But if you are not sure, we do Anderson Hasselbach. And that's the one thing that we're gonna do tomorrow. If you wanna play with it today, so I can tell you that the Anderson Hasselbach will basically gonna be pH 7.3, the pKa6, and that will be log plus the log of, in this case, it's going to be the histidine. I'm just going to write it like that. The histidine, which is the conjugate base and the protonated form, which will be the HisH plus, right? And if you solve that, you will see something very interesting that we call the proportion. And from that, you can actually know what is the exact percentage. And we're going to talk about it tomorrow. And what I'm going to do now 